Hey guys, it's me, it's Mr. Cheese X here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Pokemon Crystal. And last time, we gone down Cycling Road and talked about nothing but Slugma for five minutes in a row. And in this part, we're gonna forget all about Slugma and actually take on the gym, which apparently got to a new gym leader, Janine, the poisonous ninja master. Now, once you go into the gym, you'll find that all the trainers here are cosplaying as Janine, or Janine, 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 Joko, but I don't know. I actually don't know how to pronounce this trainer's name, and somebody must have, out there must have the same name uh, as her, and be screaming at me, No! It's pronounced this way! But anyways, all the trainers here will be cosplaying as Janine, Janine, eh, the gym leader, and better than Lily White did with Shiki Iki and Phantasmal Joya of Flower Fume, but since a good look around, all the trainers look like the leader, which of them is a real Janine, Janine, Janone, the gym leader, the real gym leader. I got on ahead and took out of every single one except for two. And yeah, the invisible walls are still here when Koga was in power. Now there's two gym leaders here. Now you will think, oh, just in the same spot Koga was, right? Nope! Instead, that was last Alice. Not Alice Margatory, no, she would be much tougher than that. But she just has a couple of blooms and an Arbok, not no big deal. The real gym leader is sure enough right up in the corner. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm only joking. I'm the real deal. A future gym, that's me! I'm just giving that name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Alright, this is Jim Lee. Again, not pronouncing the name. She's actually one of the weakest gym leaders in the game. If not the weakest, because she is actually still new. The newest gym leader of this generation, and... Well, I want to say that Erica is easier, but then again, I did have the tag advantage with the Armand. She's gonna start off as a level 36 Chromat. I know that she's the weakest by level. And wow, you survived with one hit. Well, I'll take you on with a tackle. Yeah, supersonic, by now you should know the drill confuses your opponent. Um, it should be noted that. Poison type are actually weak to fighting type. I don't know, I do not have a fighting type, so I'm just gonna have to work with what I got. By using a fire type of mine, which, which would be kind of stupid in real life because all that tons of gas can like set a flame and you'll have a huge explosion in the gym. Oh, wasting. But yeah, she has two wheezings as you see right here. We have all form of caffeine again, not really that. Um, actually, wheezing isn't that bad of a bleed mine. It has very good um, defense. And as far as I know, it also has a very good special attack, but it's kind of useless uh, now because I'm so over a level. Just gonna start off with an area dose. Start off. Dude, we're already almost done with the battle. Being a. Um, point, part bug type is going to be very easy to take it out with a fire type move because this would actually be super effective. And just like Aragon, I'm taking out all her Pokemon in one hit. And Venomoth! And here's the thing about Venomoth. Venomoth can actually, even though it is clearly flying, it can still be affected by Earthquake. And I believe that goes for future generations as well, even after they implemented the ability Levitate. 
But being, but like again, this is our most powerful Pokemon. Uh, but if you have a fire type, with is pretty easy. A dire hit basically just increases the chances of well accuracy. Guard's bag is the one that increases critical hit, but dire hit increases accuracy. But an unnecessary critical hit. Then yeah, I'll just switch to a single Boogie Bond. And I just love his bright for some reason. It's almost as goofy as Lance, but anyways. You're a tough one. You definitely need one. Here's the soul badge. Take it. And yes, Janine is Janine, Janine, Jano, Joseph. Joseph is the deity daughter of Koga. Anyways. Pretty much in here in the gym after Koga joins the Elite Four, but anyways. You're so tough, I have a special gift. It's toxic, a powerful poison subtly stops the victim's HP. Not only that, but toxin is, um, also, as far as I remember, it badly poisons the opponent. That may mean that you'll die in one ter and it turns no matter what, no, unless they, um, go ahead and he Cure the poison, but I'm actually not a big fan of poison because at this point trainers are, are chances are trainers are gonna carry around a full heal and get rid of it and using it against legendaries is a terrible idea because it's going to kill them, but anyways. I'm going to really apply myself and improve my skills. I want to become better than both father and you. And you're gonna say the same thing again, yeah. I always check twice just to make sure. And also these invisible walls aren't hard to see. You just have to take a look at these blank spaces, but anyways. That was quite battle. Doing it from JoJo? Anyways, really that's about it, um with Fuchsia City or Yeah, Fuchsia. Really, there's not left up around here, um, next time, well, with the soul badge in hand, there's really not much to talk about in Fujia City. Like I said, Safari Zone is closed, although, there's actually a glitch where you can actually access the Safari Zone, but it's actually, um, has a very limited area that you can go around, plus there's geysers all over the place, which I believe is the only time the geyser sprite is ever used, which is strange because this appears in an unaccessible area, so it's kind of like an easter egg. Just like the truck in Vermilion City back in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and Green, but Anyways, Lavender Town is our next destination. Actually, there is only one um, path left, and it's this one. Not the last path, but the last path of, like, what I consider the southern half of Kanto. With, you know, the north. This is like the oceanic Kanto with the north I consider mountainous Kanto because it has rock tunnel and mount moon. But yeah, this is the last route of what I consider to be oceanic Kanto. And we're actually going to take on that route and head right up to Lavender Town. And, um, in Pokemon Red, I... Go oh, ahead and split past that. In this part, I'm just going to um, split it down in two parts. That way, I can actually talk about the Pokemon that appear in this area. But enough talking about what I'm doing in that next episode. I might as well put it down in action and then um, by well uploading the video eventually, though, like two or three days after this is uploaded. But Man, long outro. Okay, I might as well end it right now. See you guys next time.